Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. This is one of the most ironic pieces of legislation that I've, I've run across yet. It just, it just, I, it shocks me the level of government interference and overreach that can be contained in just a few pages of policy. And it's, it's just so interesting. I mean, I was here when um, we created the TNC legislation. That's uh, Transportation Network Company, I, I recall. And I remember it was such a hot uh, potato that not a single committee wanted to even debate the subject. It bounced around. Nope, not transportation. Nope, nope, not not. Uh, you know, and it ended up in my lap, and I and I was the uh, uh, ranking member of the insurance committee at the time. I, I don't know how that was related, but I remember having a very lengthy debate on the floor of the house um, with my. Uh, uh, good friend, uh, uh, Representative Sean Scanlon, our, our current comptroller, um, and we talked for, I don't know, several hours about the legislation that, if I recall, was framed and told to me over and over again uh, at the request of one of the major transportation network companies, that they actually came into Connecticut and they said, we want to be regulated. Give us a bill. And it's so funny because I wonder if they're thinking that now. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Um, think about this. You know, the, the, the chairman very um, 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 pointedly said we used to have taxi companies. And I will just correct you, Madam Chairman. We still have taxi companies, um, not too many of them. And uh, I don't know that they're uh, very fruitful endeavors uh, any longer. Um, but we should sit back and, and, and just kind of think about, you know, why that is. Um, Maybe it's because the state of Connecticut, and, and I, I'm, I would also include the willful cooperation and participation of some of those taxi companies uh, in an effort to crowd out their competition, um, over-regulated that industry into a point where it became uh, less viable for consumers. And lo and behold, that's what created Uber and Lyft and other companies like them because they saw an opportunity to enter into a marketplace that was uh, made um, expensive and um, less than viable for a lot of consumers. So they came in and um, offered a uh, cheap way for people to get around and um, people immediately gravitated towards it and thought it was a great um, opportunity. Um, and they were right because it was a solution to a problem, and it was a free market solution to a problem, and it was a more or less unregulated free market solution to a problem that allowed um, people who had a car and free time to be able to capitalize on that and people that needed a cheap ride to uh, benefit. What a great thing. That's, that's how our, our system is supposed to work. Markets are created based out of need and the ability to provide goods and services, and that just happens naturally. And then the government gets involved and begins to regulate um, aspects of industries. What's so funny is that when I was having this debate way back, um, I don't know what year it was that we debated this uh, on the floor of the House, I was on the side of regulating uh, TNCs. But that's because I recognized that what was happening then is we were taking a completely um, – similar industry that was already highly regulated and doing nothing to change the game for them but telling their new competitor that was going to enter their marketplace and deliver the same service that they didn't have any of the same regulation whatsoever. And some of those regulations were actually important, important for the safety of drivers and for consumers and background checks on drivers, for example, something that was, was back and forth and ultimately didn't happen. Um, but now, this bill that's in front of us is proposing to uh, regulate the, the pants off of uh, this industry in a way that I think will just kill it. Because I, from what I can tell, the um, uh, transportation network company industry is already um, hurting. They are certainly not um, operating at the same levels that they were at the, at the start, at the innovation of uh, those companies. And um, I have a couple of friends that, that actually um, 
drive for Uber, and they tell me that you know the rides are just not there like they once were, and um, I, I I don't know what's going to happen when those rides cost significantly more, which is what's going to happen here. Um, just from a, a, a pure standpoint of you know market reaction, that's what's going to happen when you are making statements in a law that say. Um, a network worker shall receive a minimum per trip compensation. I mean, I can't believe that we would put this in, in a law to tell a private business how much they have to pay their employees. Um, and they're not, excuse me, I, not employees, how they have to pay someone for an independent contract to do something that is negotiated in good faith by the, by the, by the parties. And it's completely at will. There is no force, again, I know that we're constantly talking about how people are being compelled to do things uh, because they have a job, but no one's compelling them to have that job. Um, certainly, I, you know, I heard the testimony of the people complaining that the job doesn't pay enough and so forth, but that's just a fact of life. You know, jobs pay what the market will bear. Um, and we saw what happened to the taxi industry when the price became too much for consumers, less and less people use taxis. And now um, this will have the exact same effect um, on TNCs when we uh, force uh, the rates to go up by virtue of putting requirements for um, not just pay but a lot of other things in this bill on the on the people that provide these services. So it, that's the the matter of fact result of what will this policy will do, and it's a simple no based on that. But my concern is just the shocking degree with which this committee and this legislature thinks that it has the right to engage in activity like that. I, it just blows me away. I, 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 I sit here and I, I can't even believe that we are in America and there is a bill in front of us that is going to tell this private company to tell a willing independent contractor how much they have to pay them. It just, it just blows me away. It does not belong in this country. This activity is in, in, um, anathema to everything that the country stands for. The, the, it is also proven time and time again to damage markets, to prevent opportunity, to prevent jobs, and to reduce production. The, look around the world at communist and socialist countries. That's what happens to them. They do not survive because you cannot have the government in charge of dictating people's pay. You can't. The pe reason why people engage in um, coming up with brilliant ideas, like creating an Uber, is because they have the opportunity to make something of themselves in the process, to benefit from that idea, to make themselves sometimes incredibly wealthy. But in the process, they also give opportunity to other people who are afforded jobs and more opportunity themselves. But then the government comes along and says, oh, no, no. We can't let actual free market activity occur where everybody's happy and they're doing their own thing and they're pursuing their own freedom. We've got to come along and we've got to interrupt that. And the net result of this policy, and I will guarantee it, I'll make a bet with anybody listening in this room <laughs> for dinner, <laughs> that if we actually pass this policy, there will be not only less uh, ride share activity, but there will be less people gainfully employed doing it, and there will be um, people suffering on the street that need to get a ride because they don't have an alternative that's inexpensive. It's bad, bad policy, and it's worse than that, Madam Chairman. It is something that this um, flies in the face of our American system, and um, if this bill comes to the floor of the Senate, I can promise you a lengthy debate on it. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Senator Sampson, and you did say